Hello, I'm Svetlin Naku from Softuni and I'm here for the next episode from my Dev Concept series. In this lesson, I will explain the concepts of front-end, back-end and full-stack development and I will go into detail about some front-end and back-end technologies such as DOM, AJAX, REST, front-end frameworks and UI component libraries at the front-end and databases, ORM frameworks, REST APIs, MVC frameworks, containers and cloud at the backend. Later, I will talk about the difference between front-end and back-end technologies and what the purpose of each is. Finally, I will explain the term full stack, what it means, how to become a full stack developer and how this role fits in a modern software engineering team. Front-end and back-end are important concepts in software development. Front-end and back-end uh, separate the modern app into client-side or user interface and server-side, the data processing components. So almost all connected software we use every day has a front-end or client-side and back-end and they are connected in, with some protocols. The front-end and back-end come from the client-server model and they are a special form of, of this model. So the server is the backend and the client is the front end. So most modern apps are not monolith and have client side, the front end and server side backend. So they have uh, a kind of UI part and a kind of backend or server side part. Uh, for, for example, a, a chat app has an app which holds the, the chat user interface and backend which holds the messages and users which communicate between each other. And the front end consists of the client side app comp components on the so called presentation layer in the three tiered uh, architecture. So the front end. Uh, displays the presentation to the user, the user interface or the presentation is through something on the screen. This is what users see at their screens, for example, text, images, video, fields, uh, forms, lists, icons, buttons, sliders, toolbars, menus and other UI elements. Uh, the front end is where users interact with the app. So we have the app and we have the user and user interacts with the app at the front end. It clicks icons or presses buttons. Uh, it can be in the form of sliding uh, list up or down, selecting items from a list, entering text in te text fields, drawing at the screen, playing and recording audio and video. And all this is a user interaction. And it happens at the front end. The data collected in the front end is typically sent to the server side for processing. So if the front end takes some data, it is sent over the network to the back end. And the front end only executes, executes some simple presentation logic like data validation. So a presentation logic is a logic which says which button to show on the screen, at these moments, what the user should see and what should be hidden from the user. This is called presentation logic. So it is decided here at the client side or in the web browser. Data storage and business rules are implemented at the back end. For example, a front end uh, is the Facebook client app on your smartphone. It displays the news feed from your friends and allows you to share links, messages and photos. And all the content is stored at the backend of the Facebook servers and comes through the network. To display the news feeds, the client app sends a request to the backend a, through an API and retrieves the data and visualizes back at the screen of your mobile phone or in the web app. The backend consists of server-side components and software systems. So the backend is where data and business 
Logic APIs stay and it, it implements the data storage and processing logic. It typically, it typically is, structured, is structured as services, which expose a set of operations. So we have services, 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 and they have a common API, which is provided to the front end to take some data, to send some data, and the front end to visualize this data. The back end exposes an API for the front end to access the server side data and logic. And this API application programming interface uh, consists of the functions and methods and functionality and messages can, which can be exchanged, which are available for the client apps. API is the connection between the front end and the back end, and it's uh, the it is the part of the back end which is invocable from the front end. The back end systems often use external storage systems such as databases, for example, uh, PostgreSQL uh, database or MySQL database, uh, and the Storage system, database, or external API could be dif different. Databases, uh, like MySQL, or document databases. Uh, MySQL is a traditional relational database, but it could be also a, a MongoDB, for example, a document database, or Redis, which is a key value storage system, or cloud database, like Amazon DynamoDB, which is uh, DynamoDB, which is uh, similar to Azure Cosmos DB, uh, enterprise distributed database uh, for enterprise systems. So the backend could use also file storage or blob storage or uh, some other kind of storage system or external API to, to third-party backend systems such as, for example, a bank uh, API or a ERP system. Uh, it can be, for example, Amazon S3, which is a file storage or Azure Blob system, which holds uh, long files and data such as photos, for example. Example of backend is the Facebook server side uh, backend uh, infrastructure, which consists of servers and uh, APIs and other systems. And it keeps the users in Facebook, their friends, the news feeds, the shared links between them, the messages they send to each other, photos, and all the content and processing logic, which you can see uh, in Facebook. This content is delivered to the front-end apps through the network uh, using an API, the application programming interface. And when the client type uh, app requests the news feed uh, in Facebook for a certain user, the backend retrieves the data from the database and sends it to the client over the network. This is how it works. So most systems use the HTTP protocol to connect to the front end with the back end. In this scenario, the server side, oh, sorry, the, the server side, uh, in this scenario, the server side uh, communicates with the front end over this HTTP, uh, and the server side APIs are exposed as operations available as standard HTTP methods such as get, post, uh, and uh, put, patch, delete, and many others. And this is known as RESTful, RESTful API, uh, which basically is a set of operations used to retrieve and modify data over HTTP. Alternative to the RESTful APIs are some technologies like GraphQL, the Graph Query Language from Facebook, which is a data retrieval query language, or for example, Falcor, 
which is a technology from Netflix, which implements remote data models based on JSON. Some systems uh, use different protocols than HTTP. So instead of HTTP, they may use, for example, the JRPC, which is a binary level protocol from Google for invoking remote functionality. Uh, and it is designed for high performance. Or another alternative to the HTTP is the Reactive X, the Reactive X technology, uh, which is a communication framework based on the publish subscribe model, which implements observable remote data streams, which means that if something changes on the backend, um, a push notification or event is automatically sent to the front end to uh, tell, tell the front end that something is changed. Still, HTTP and REST are the market leaders and the dominant technology for interaction between front end and back end. The front end is what users see on the screen. It consists of the client side app components, the so called presentation layer of the software system. The front end displays the user interface to the users and interacts with them. The front end communicates with the back end through the network using standard protocols such as HTTP, REST, and many others. Modern front end technologies are built around the following concepts and principles. First, the concept of hierarchical UI component trees, such as the DOM tree in the web browsers, the REST architecture, and the RESTful style APIs. The AJAX technology and the concept of asynchronous invocations of backend services which return data, which is then rendered at the screen by the front end frameworks or apps. The concept of templating engines for UI rendering and the concept of routing for URL based navigation. Also, the concept of UI libraries and front-end frameworks. Let's review some of these concepts. The front-end is what users see on the screen. It consists of the client-side app components, the presentation layer of the software systems. The front-end displays the user interface to the users and interacts with them. Let's review the concepts and principles of modern front-end technologies such as the DOM tree in web browsers, the REST architecture and REST for APIs, AJAX and the concept of asynchronous invocation of backend services, the concepts of templating engines for URL rendering, the concept of routing for URL based navigation and the concept, concepts of UI libraries and front end frameworks. Uh, web front-end, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, together with the document object model DOM, AJAX, and few others, are the dominant technology for building user interfaces for modern software apps. This set of web and front-end technology is known under the name HTML5 platform. Um, or the web platform. See https platform.html5.org for more details about the HTML5 platform. It consists of lots of technologies, APIs and standards uh, implemented in modern web browsers. It is very important for every HTML5 uh, modern software engineer to be familiar with these HTML5 technologies and the concepts behind them. Web front-end technologies uh, are the way developers build the user interface displayed in web pages, websites and web apps and cross-platform cross apps. 
the HTML, CSS, and CSS languages describe documents, content layout, formatting, and everything we see on the screen in the web browser. JavaScript, which is also called ECMAScript, is the main language used by developers to program user interfaces in the web browser. The DOM technology allows accessing the elements in the web page through JavaScript. The AJAX technology allows invoking backend services from JavaScript front-end apps. JS front-end frameworks such as React, Angular, Vue, uh, simplify the web front-end development by providing structure, components, guidelines, and patterns to build maintainable front-end apps. DOM, the document object model, defines uh, the structure of web pages. Documents in the web browser are represented by a DOM tree. The DOM tree holds a hierarchy of UI and other elements. DOM uses composition and most elements could hold other elements within themselves. This way the elements are organized in a tree, the DOM tree. The DOM API allows changing the DOM from JavaScript uh, code. And this is how modern websites and apps build interactive user interfaces. Modern front-end apps manipulate the DOM tree directly from JavaScript or through a front-end framework and consume data from the back-end. This is a simple, uh, simple example of the DOM API. We want to build a web page uh, which calculates the sum of two numbers. And this is how it looks like. Three text fields and a button. The numbers are entered in the first two text fields. And when the calculate button is clicked, the third field displays the sum of the numbers from the first two fields. We create a JavaScript code snippet in the web page to handle the button click event. We find the button element uh, in the DOM tree by its ID and assign an event handler function for its onClick property. When the button is clicked, we use the DOM API to take the text content from the fields then we parse the field values into numbers calculate their sum and display the sum into the was field We use the DOM API function document.getElementById and the DOM properties on click and value to access the fields uh, and the button from the DOM tree representing the elements of the web page. I'm not going to explain this in more detail but since here I want to show you a concept, the DOM tree not to teach you in HTML, DOM, JavaScript, and web front-end programming. We shall have a comprehensive web front-end programming course at SoftUni in the end-to-end -end -end learning track for software developers, where we will learn and practice how to manipulate the DOM tree in more detail. Now it's time to demonstrate to you the previous example in action. I have prepared a wife code 
example at repo.it and let's open the link. It takes time to load as usually. This is the same code from the previous slide. It takes two numbers and calculates their sum. Let's run the code. We enter 5 and 3 and the result is 8 as expected. Let's see the DOM tree here. The DOM tree is this structure. We have input, we have another input, we have another input and we have a button. And this fields have here values assigned in them. These are the properties of these elements. The backend is the part of software systems which users don't see on their screen. The backend software runs in the server rooms of modern data centers and it is responsible for data storage, data processing and the business rules implemented in software. The backend is the server-side part of the applications where users and their data are stored and processed. The backend development is built around concepts, frameworks, libraries and tools for implementing business logic, data processing and data storage and exposing interfaces or APIs for the front-end. Now, let's review the most important principles and concepts from the backend development. Backend is the part of the software systems which users don't see on their screens. The backend provides concepts, frameworks, libraries and tools to build business logic, implement data processing and data storage and expose programming interfaces, APIs, for the front-end. The backend is the server-side part of the applications where users and their data are stored and processed. Let's review the most important principles and concepts from backend development. Backend technologies are the technologies, platforms and frameworks which run at the server side part of software systems. The server side software components implement logic and processing which are not related to the user interface. Backend technologies provide concepts, frameworks, libraries and tools to build business logic, implement data processing and data storage and expose programming interfaces, APIs, for the front-end. Let's look at some of these backend technologies. Data management technologies, databases and ORM frameworks such as MySQL, PostgreSQL, Antiframework and Hibernate. Backend web frameworks and MVC frameworks such as Spring MVC, Django, and ASP.NET MVC. RESTful uh, API frameworks, reactive APIs, and other services and APIs such as ASP.NET Web API, Flask, RESTful, and RX Java. Microservices, containers, and cloud, cloud such as Docker images in Azure and Amazon. AWS. All these backend technologies are available with different programming languages such as C Sharp, Java, JavaScript, Python, PHP, C, Go, Swift, and others. And development platforms such as .NET Core, Java E, Node.js, and others. Backend developers play an important role in the software development. They work on the server side of software systems. This is a popular profession in the software industry. Backend developers deal with the business logic, data processing, data storage and service APIs. 
they use database servers, uh, backend platforms, application servers, containers, cloud environments, and many other backend technologies and tools. The backend components are often deployed as containers in a cloud environment or are built specifically for a certain cloud platform. So backend developers often deal with cloud and DevOps. Now, let's look at details about databases, ORM systems, MVC frameworks, containers, and operating systems. Full stack development combines backend and frontend development. This is what most software companies do when they build software products. Full stack development requires end-to-end -end architecture, design, and implementation of both server-side and client-side components and integrating them into a single software system. Most software projects, uh, the technical team consists of team leader, plus backend developers, plus frontend developers, plus QA engineers. Smaller teams combine the front-end and back-end developer roles into a single full-stack developer role. Full-stack developers design and build software systems, which involves both back-end and front-end development. Full-stack developers build back-end services. They implement business logic, data processing, data storage, uh, databases, server-side APIs, containers, and cloud. They build also front-end apps and user interfaces, web apps, mobile apps, desktop apps, and perform other UI-related development. They design the software architecture, connect and integrate the front-end with the back-end components, manage the testing and the production environments, deploy, configure, and test the software system. Full-stack developers are usually senior software developers who have experience in both front-end and back-end development. They have backend development background, strong algorithmic thinking, analyst, analytical problem solving, and engineering skills, together with front end skills and sense for user experience UX and user interface UI. Did you like this lesson? Do you want more? Join the learners community at softunit.org. Subscribe to my YouTube channel to get more free video tutorials on coding, dev concepts, and software development. Get access to more free dev lessons and learning resources for developers. Get free help from mentors and meet other learners. And it's all free, so join now, softuni.org.